Good day, everybody, and welcome to this uh, cooling webinar. Um, we are here to satisfy your desire of knowing more about coolers. So if you're watching this webinar, you definitely develop uh, with over time a passion for coolers and passion for coolers needs to be filled, needs to be um, uh, from time to time, fill it up with more knowledge, with more experience, with more ideas. So that's, that's the purpose of today. And um, let's uh, run immediately through the presentation without any hesitation. So today we will talk about cool IT, or like a lot of people call it, cool it. But the, re the real name starts with cool IT. So the, the device that enable us to size any air blast cooler around the globe for IDAC International. So let's uh, start with a little bit of a background. So if you want to know a little bit more about theory, if you want to refresh your theory, we uh, recommend you to go to our webpage, to new webpage, and, and have a, a ride on our cooling system back to basics. There, we talk about the theory, the basic of cooling, and uh, you can refresh that, or you can watch it again, or you can watch it for the first time. Um, if you don't know how to install Cool It, how to get it, um, how to get a, a USB version of it, a standalone, um, you can watch also this webinar. Um, we call it the webinar prerequisite of today. Um, just to, to familiarize with the software, how we install it, how I navigate. It's not the purpose of today. Today we go more deep into a few exercise, practical exercise, and we try to um, dig into this crazy world of sizing a coolers. So another things I, I like to advise everybody, if you have a sizing software with you, uh, you should have uh, what we call it, what the, our colleague in Germany call it the DAS book. We call it the book in English. Um, and you should download it. It's definitely a good uh, book. Uh, it, it's got all our portfolio current and uh, it's on our webpage. Again, you can download the PDF. So together with the book and Cool It, you are all set to find a, a cooler uh, and, and, and be ready for purchasing. So today we call we do three cases on the sizing software for Air Blast. On the top right is the icon. Once you have installed it on your PC, um, you have this kind of icon. Um, I stretch the fact that uh, in Australia is available for all IDAC employee and uh, official service partner. But if you want a version, a standalone version, please get in contact with IDAC. We can provide you something. So today we're looking at this model, which is the current version is 1.6. Okay, so let's start with the first uh, demonstration exercise. Um, I, I put this uh, web, uh, webinar together, just taking real inquiry that we got on our internal and external sales in Australia. So. This, this is a nice inquiry. It's, it's definitely a mobile machine. We can watch, watch it from the uh, image on the left. This machine has got a, an engine with 33.6 horsepower, which translated into kilowatt is around 25 kilowatt. In fact, this, the customer say the hydraulic system uses 25 kilowatt of power, so the whole power of the engine. He's got an hydraulic oil, HISO uh, 68, and he's got a flow rate of 46 liter per minute. The customer is also writing, the machine tend to operate very hot, getting close to, say, 100 degree. Ideally, we need to pull around 30 degree out of the system. Ideal temperature of the system below 60 degree, power available 12 volts, so it's clearly that you know, there's no way we can, um, you know, he's already making a selection. He want a DC cooler driven by a 12 volt DC. And he give us the space available, nice. And he's also done a bit of research and he say, we also like to integrate thermal bypass, the IBT. So uh, what is your best option either? Then he put back to us. So when we have inquiry like that, we can do uh, immediately a sizing and, uh, let, let, let's do it together. So let's see what, what happened. But if we take this and, 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 and we crunch it into cool it. So we say uh, we start here. Uh, we go with product config. 
We can do wizard or we can do manual. I, su I strongly suggest to everybody to start with a wizard version because the wizard is guiding you step by step. And as you get familiar with the software, you can go straight to the manual one. We will do it also today in, in, in the webinar so you can see the effect. Let's start with the wizard. So the guys say it's oil in the machine, in the little excavator. It's an ISO BG68. Uh, and uh, we definitely want the 12 volt only. So there's no point of selecting other form of fan drive because the guy has already select the, the 12 volt. Um, if the guy was not uh, sure uh, during the inquiry you can select all of it and cool it will give you all the option ac dc hydraulic and then you can select it so next step the flow is say it's 46 liter per minute and the max inlet temperature is 100 degree and oops it didn't tell us what ambient so that's something that you know, we find it commonly where people don't tell us the max ambient and okay, we need to judge, but also what people forget is also to give us the range because depending on the oil that is using ISO VG68 in this case, this excavator could operate in New Zealand or in Tasmania and there is going to be cold in the morning. So ambient temperature is something that you must ask the customer every time and you must have the range the minimum and the maximum so in this case let's say we put 45 in in australia okay we want to have it then the software come up with a warning don't worry about that the software is made in europe where already 40 is a big temperature we just starting to get hot at 40 isn't it so that's the australian uh, way so kilowatt that's the crucial part of the exercise calculate the power and we can click on this and going there we got two forms we got tank increasing temperature more sophisticated but we need to have more data which is not the case now we'll saw in another example or existing cooler so if we got our 46 liter per minute we say is going to have 100 degree and then he's going to have an output he say ideally we should have the temperature below 60 but then it's contradicting we say ideally we need to put around 30 degree down so let's say 30 degree down and we calculate so then we say 30 down make 70 calculate 40 kilowatt well what happened now now the we need to start thinking because what happened is that if we go on like that and i'll i'll show you that we can go on like that we can uh, forget the altitude we can go on and you say okay give me the cooler for heat exchange, uh, let's say a few results, submit. What is happening is that we got no results. Okay, and why we got no results? Because, you know, what is asking is not the real scenario. Why is not the real scenario? Because we cannot require more kilowatt of the cooler than what actually the engine is creating. So the engine is creating 25 kilowatt so we don't need to cool all of it and we need to cool a percentage of it so definitely not 40 kilowatts so what is your suggestion andrea a lot of people will say to me now well the suggestion is to be real and to say okay we got 25 kilowatt of power we got in an efficiency in the system which is between 25 and 30 percent of the power so the reality is that if we calculate that the real power required is actually seven kilowatt and instead of putting the max inlet liquid temperature we calculate from where the customer wants us to be which is 60. so he wants that we are below 60 so 60 should be my inlet liquid temperature because this that I put now in the software is the worst condition that the machine can operate. And so 
the, the message that I want to give to everybody today is that you have to size the cooler in the worst thermal condition, which is not the highest temperature that you see in the cooler. It is actually the lowest differential temperature. And what is this one? It is 60 to 45, okay? So, which is what we call DT15, because if you add 15 degrees to the ambient, you bring to 60. So this is the worst condition for this cooler to operate in Australia. And that's the sensitive way of sizing it. So let's see what we got now. Suddenly we got a winner, okay? So suddenly we got something now. So we got either a, an, hydro, an ELD5 or an ELD6. So we, we have a solution. We have 17% um, of extra power. So that's how the cooler look like for us. If we want to know more, we can go through it and we can see all the technical data of the ELD5. And if we want to have pressure drop and things, we can export it so we can export all the input, the charts, the drawing, and you can print it. And we can have, like, for example, AAA and print. And we got a nice ready report to send it to any customer or OEM or end user, where we see our selection, our design, and our model. So coming back to the selector, now that we have a result, we can we can think about or we can change parameter for example what if this excavator uh, works only in 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 the in the cbd and never gets more than 40 in a certain cd we can change the ambient and we can apply the changes and we can see different result oh wow we can jump down one or two or three sizes so if the ambient is 40 actually your best boy is the ELD4, and we can um, uh, open it up, and we can also see the nearest cooler. That's uh, a beauty of uh, of uh, the software. So we the best one is uh, size four. We can see the size three. We can see the size four point five. So it's actually one size down, one size up, and we can also see thermally what does it mean. So if your ambient is not going to be higher. Than 40 degree um, than 40 degree your best boy for you is actually the ELD4 which is by by chance exactly the size that the customer was indicating to us of the space of the machine but in case you need a bigger ambient then you need to go to one size up or if you have a lower ambient Tasmania New Zealand you can go one size down so I just want to show to everybody how important it is to know exactly the ambient temperature. That is the uh, purpose of this exercise because it can drive you to, let's say, two or three sizes different. We're talking about size three to size five. We got already two or three sizes in between. But definitely somebody would say, well, I don't get it, Andrea. You move the 100 to 60. What happened if I take my ELD4 and I increase my inlet temperature. Well, you can play with the software and you can realize that, that it will only give you more uh, power. So actually increasing this is not a negative thing for the cooler. It's actually giving you more differential and the cooler will be even um, more performing. But important, keep the lowest amount of it. So let's jump to the next exercise. Uh, the next exercise is actually uh, a cone crusher. We had quite a few of them in Australia. Um, the machine is a cone crusher. The application is an oil uh, recirculation system. The problem is overheating, of course, and uh, all, all the people that write to us have overheating problem. Otherwise, they don't write to the, to the cooling department. So crusher shut down at the 60 degree set temperature again the 60s coming back cooler fan switches on at 45 iso vg 150 
mobile gear, I, ideal operating temperature 45 to 48, uh, um, back from the system, pressure tank volume, 300 liter pump flow, and etc. So for for people that know, don't know what a corn crusher is, I, I like to show it uh, with a little video from one of our uh, global OEM very quickly, just to give an idea to people what a corn crusher looks and where it is on a mine site. So here you go, our cooler is there. So you get an idea uh, where where the cooler is. And now let, let, let's size it, let's size it together. So uh, let's go back to the sizing software. Let's go it again. We want electric motor, that's why it's not uh, finding it. So it's a 400, four, uh, 400 volt 50 hertz. We are in Australia, don't need to look for any of the other uh, voltage. We select that, it's an industrial, 200 liter per minute, going back to the wizard, uh, inlet 60, ambient 40. We can allow multiple if we want, we can give four or five to see how the software react. 86 kilowatt, clearly, let's go, let's run altitude and let's run and find uh, at least five solutions. I always like to suggest to people to do heat exchange and keep it there. you got the best efficiency out of it. Here we go. So the cooler is giving us all the, all the option. As you can see, because we have selected this uh, beautiful feature of multiple, he is giving us that the, the best guy at minus 1% is actually the 14S, is just there. Uh, you can do the same job with two ACLN 11S. Uh, people know that a 14 is actually two S, so it's exactly there. Um, if you want to be a bit more reserved, is four percent is the 12 and 14, and so same story. We can select the one in the middle, have it the other here. You look at the nearest and have all the option down here, and have it also tested and 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 checked on the chart. So. Um, let's go to the next exercise. Uh, let's go back. Next exercise is uh, actually an electrical uh, control cabinet. So uh, this is an application that we're doing often recently. We use the air blast cooler to cool electronic equipment with the uh, use of a cold plate or uh, a cold plate already integrated into the electrical um, apparatus, electrical um, component. So in this case is a, a cooling on of a control cabinet. The customer wants to increase the cooling capacity by more than 50% on his system and below the, the input. So we are talking about water glycol 5050, total system volume 220, heat load, in existing is 50 kilowatt, 175 liter, max water glycol temperature, again 60, max ambient 40. So solution, parallel series, let's let's have a look at it. Let's open, uh, cool it again. Let's go back to wizard again, so we don't make any mistake. This time is water glycol, 50-50 is the mixture, means that we have 50% glycol, 50% water. Again, an electrical uh, industrial uh, cooler. So we keep 400 volt three phase electric motor. Uh, the flow in this case was 175 liter. Next, uh, 60, 40. Yes, allow multiple. Let's allow three or four different one. Next step, well, the existing one is 50, but let's go and evaluate the existing one. So the if we do this, the tank volume there was 220. The initial uh, temperature in the morning was like 60, sorry, 20. The final is 60. The time is 10 minutes. So that's exactly 53 kilowatts. So this is 
how we were designing the system before. So what happened is that the tank is the same, the initial temperature in the morning is the same, the final temperature is the same, the, the delta T is 40 degrees in 10 minutes. Why the customer needs the double of the power? Well, most probably the electronic is heating up this fluid faster than before. And if it's heating up in five minutes instead of 10 minutes, look what happened on the power. It's just double, 107. So what happened is that we can we can go back, keep the, uh, the, the the this value and go to the next and see now what is my boy always change into it exchange submit and so now my real boy is actually two el eleven okay and uh, we can go back here and change the value so before was actually 50 see what happened well was a, a size 10 okay so we we 50 percent more than before we are actually on on this value so the time is really critical on a system you might need the double of the cooling power because the system is actually getting hotter faster and that's what i want to demonstrate you with this exercise now, I want to uh, finish off the exercise by saying, um, I hear a lot of people saying, uh, well, I got an existing cooler, I just chuck another one in series. Well, that's the worst things you can do. And if you are not uh, convinced by that, you can play with the software. We have done that internally, and we give an example of two ACLN 10 versus a 12. So if you put a single cooler at 200 liter per minute, you got 103 kilowatt. If you put in two in series, you got 220. But if you put in parallel, like we recommend every time, you got much more. So I hope you are convinced. I hope you have clear in your mind that parallel is much better than series. And uh, if you want to be a cooler expert and if you want to know more about what we've done today more deep into the physics um we have courses we have done the courses for cooling system thermal optimization we call it because it's a course that we don't just tell you how to size cooler we teach you how to tackle a thermal problem a thermal issue uh, we've done the course for several years in victoria we are close to uh, publish it also online soon so get in contact with us get in touch with us and if you need a cooler in a hurry don't forget that now we can also sell it to you on our new web page online you can buy straight away a cooler today it's a beautiful sunny day in melbourne so i like to close with a beautiful uh, thermal smile and uh, see you at the next webinar on cooling system Bye for now and stay cool.